Hi everyone, I hope you guys are having a good night. I am here with your Bible study for tonight. So the Bible study was going to have us read again um, John chapter 15, which we just read night before last. So I decided, well, I don't think they'll want to go through the one we just read night before last again already. So I marked that as read and skip to the next one which so tonight we'll be reading John chapter 4 so I'll read all of John chapter 4 and tonight's devotion goes along with John chapter 4 verse 4 which says but he had to go through Samaria now what does that verse have to do with the devotion well I don't know either but we'll find out when we read the devotion together and then I'll read our homework and see what that's all about. And then we'll go over our verses that we're supposed to be remembering together. So we'll put that down. Get my glasses on and we'll see what chapter 4 is all about here. Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman. So that is when Jesus goes through Samaria and talks with that Samaritan woman. That he asked to draw some water for him from the well. And he tells her about the men she's been with, that he knows about all the men she's been with, and she tells the others, um, this man that she met has told her everything she's ever done, and he stays with them for a while, and more people there believe in him. Okay, then the disciples rejoin Jesus. Many Samaritans believe, and Jesus heals the official son, and then that's all of chapter 4. So it's not that long. We'll get into greater detail reading it. And then I'll read the devotion and the homework. Okay, so let me get started here. I'll be reading in the New International Version if you'd like to follow along. The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour, six o'clock. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy some food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew. And I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, and did also his sons and his flocks and herds? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Now listen to what Jesus says. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you have 
the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true, sir, the woman said. I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is the Spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? But of course, Jesus is talking about, you know, spiritual food. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows, another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done and have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. After the two days he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, for they also had been there. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. That was his first miracle, remember, at the wedding banquet? And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus replied, You may go. Your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. 
When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, the fever left him yesterday at the seventh hour. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and all his household believed. This was the second miraculous sign that Jesus performed, having come from Judea to Galilee. And that is all of chapter four of John. All right, guys. Now I'll read the devotion. Um, this devotion is by Diane Neal Matthews. Not sure if I've heard one from her or not. One of my favorite stories recorded in the New Testament is about the woman at the well's encounter with Jesus, the one we just read. Maybe the story doesn't mean as much to you if you've never felt like an outsider or less than or experienced a sting of discrimination or carried around a weight of guilt over a wrong choice you've made or struggled with questions about spiritual matters that you didn't fully understand but didn't feel as though you could voice them but then can't we all identify with at least one of these emotions? Yep. The core message of the story is found in one brief sentence, but he had to go through Samaria. Although the shortest route from Judea to Galilee cut through Samaria, most Jews chose another way. They avoided contact with the Samaritans, a mixed race of Jew and Gentile. Oh. That's what a Samaritan is, a mixed race of Jew and Gentile. That's why they didn't want to associate with the Samaritans, because they had Gentile in them. A Gentile was not a Jew, like I'm a Gentile, because I'm not Jewish. Who had been rejected by the Jews and had established their own temple and religious traditions, but not Jesus. His love compelled him to go into Samaria, to wait by the well for a woman who was emotionally and spiritually parched, a woman who desperately needed the living water. He offered and would go on to introduce her village to their Messiah. The same love compels Jesus to wait for each one of us today, even when we're oblivious of our need of him, with him, he is there gently prodding us to confess our failures and sins as a Samaritan woman did, longing to heal us from our bruises and wounds, ready to reveal his presence and power, extending living water to refresh us and quench our thirst. The question is, are we willing to meet with him and receive all he desires to give us? That's right, because Jesus is always there. God is always there. They're always waiting on us. And like the verse we're supposed to remember, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, what does it say? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus and God will never change. They are always the same, always. They will never change. We are the ones that will change. And it is our decision whether we change, whether we want to believe God whether we want to turn to them or not because they're always there for us they will never leave us it is up to us whether we turn to them or whether we leave them or turn to them that's our choice that's our choice whether we go to them stay with them leave them turn to them that's our choice not theirs they're always there for us and they're not going to leave us Okay, and the homework, if you want to do it, is this. At the beginning or end of your day, imagine Jesus sitting and waiting for you to come by so he can talk with you. He's always there to listen to you. He wants you to talk to him. Will your love for him compel you to respond? 
Hey, I love talking to God and Jesus every day. I look forward to it. You don't know how much better it makes you feel. It truly, truly makes you feel so good. It really does. It's like talking to your best friend. It really does. You should really try it sometime. Okay, the verses we're supposed to go over. Um, what we just went over. What does Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 say? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How about Proverbs 17, 17? A friend loves at all times. And last but not least, Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. You can do all things through Jesus who gives you strength. All right, guys. So our next um, Bible study will be in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's Bible study. And I hope you guys enjoy the stories that I put up tonight if you guys watch any. They are all true stories. So I hope you guys have a blessed night and God bless you all. Good night.